the pledge now. Oh. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty, and justice for all. If we could remain standing and remember our men and women in the armed forces, uh, those affected by COVID, um, the, those affected by some very bad fires even today down in New York City, children dying, adults, we need to remember them. Um, I also have Christine Rafferty, Marie Morgan, and a former supervisor of the Town of Highlands, former councilman of the Town of Highlands, and former trustee of the Village of Holland Falls, and many other things in the fire department, the planning board, so many things that will all come out in the next few days. Joe McCormick. Thank you. I do feel the heat, Jim. All right. I will name myself as the presiding officer. Uh, discussion uh, first on the agenda. Discussion uh, update on the request for property owner at Fourth Saddley Road for utility payment adjustment. Anyone have any questions or want to move on this further? Uh, yeah, I have something to say, Mr. Mayor. Okay. Um, I, I talked to uh, Kevin Hurst, and I, I understand it uh, uh, better. Um, you know that what happened was, you know, obviously not her fault and stuff like that. And, and uh, um, I understand it doesn't go into the sewer, uh, but you know she she had the water bill that, that was up up there because of that leak and she was unaware of it because she does not live at that residence. So, um, you know, I, I make a motion to, uh, uh, I'd like to this time uh, pay for that and, um, you know, uh, for, for now. And then maybe we can take a case by case going farther or, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, not, not do it in the future. But uh, uh, for, for this one here, this, this motion that you're asking, I would like to make that motion to take care of that for uh, Jane Riley. Well, I, I, I one, just give me one second. I do appreciate your comment, and it, and as in the past, and we will continue. It will be on a, on a, case case basis or situation by situation. Good. I'm sorry. Now, as long as it's going to go case by case, because yeah. some people think that, well, you did it for this one, you got to do it for that one. I yeah. would suggest that we look at it case by case. Yeah. Well, I think that is that poses a problem though if you do it case by case. You know, you can't just do it for friends or family. I'm not and, suggesting uh, that. I know. But uh, this one in particular is uh, a family member of one of the board members, right? Um, no. No, I'm not a family member. And, 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 uh, yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry. Mr. D'Onofrio, she's yeah. not family to you? No. Oh, how do you mean? Uh, listen, I don't know what you're trying to insinuate. <laughs> Uh, this person, uh, Jane Riley, yes. who lives at Four Saddley Grove, and I won't address this any longer, is uh, after this comment, is not related to me. Oh. She's a wonderful lady. I wish she, she was. She is a wonderful lady. Okay, and thank her you. Daughter is is there Denofrio. anything else? So her daughter is a Denofrio who lives with your brother. That's all I'm saying. She doesn't live if with him. She's married with him. Uh, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Oh, okay. That's right. That any other, any other comments? So that is what I'm saying. If we're going to adopt this, Gary, I agree. I think we should then, I, I have nothing against that. I think we should grant it to her. But we cannot do it for friends and family I'm on a case-by-case -case basis. I'm glad you we changed your mind from the last meeting. Well, well I'm, right? I'm not bringing this up on friends or family. I'm bringing up that no, I have to have more to information uh, about it. Uh, and she's on a fixed income. Um, so I did do a little bit digging, and I did find out some more information. Uh, and that's right. why I said I wanted to hold off from the last meeting, because I wanted to make up my mind just to find out more information. And I was granted that from the last meeting. And right. this is my decision now, because I found out that information. And as you know, Brian just said it, and I said also, and he backs me up on it. 
uh, Trustee Allward does, is that we will go case by case. And it's not friends and family. It's just maybe somebody just does not have the money. And I know it goes on the taxpayers, but that's why we're a village and, and, and uh, that's why people thank us for certain, certain, to help them out in certain situations. So that's all I have to say on it. But yes, yes. No, I agree with you. I, I, I want to give Ms. Riley this break. I'm glad I, that you've changed I agree your mind. with you, but I think what I'm saying is that if we're going to do that, we should make a policy that anyone who says that they had a water break, a leak, and that's why, and they have paperwork to show from a plumber, a random plumber that says, you know, it didn't go in the sewer system, please give her a break. And they have a history of uh, having lower bills. I mean, this is something that we should give Ms. Riley, but we shouldn't do it on a case-by-case -case basis. I if think you want it to be a local law, a I would ask you to, uh, um, if you want it to be a, a local policy, local law, I would ask you to address it with the village attorney and show right up a proposed local law. Jim? Yeah, just real quick. Um, so, for the minutes, will you put that down that I've re asked, requested that the village trustee speak to the village attorney? Go ahead. Okay. Thank uh, you. All right. So, just, just a couple quick things. Um, I, first of all, and I appreciate the clerk, she had mentioned at the last meeting, or was the meeting before that, um, that it is in village law that it is up to the board to take each case and make a decision on it. Well, we might not need a local law. Right. Uh, that's number one. And number two, when I had said to the village clerk, I'm not sure if it was the last meeting uh, or a meeting before that, that as far as I can remember, we've always, you know, the, the homeowner has paid the water bill because your sewer bill is based on your water bill. And if they had a leak or a situation that they explained in writing, that we usually uh, reduced, reduced the sewer bill because there was an issue in the house. So as far back as I can remember, meaning because I'm 42 and I was, I've been on the board for I, I don't know how many years, but um, for my recollection, that's what we've done. Uh, and I think we've done that as a case by case. I, n none of this came up. None of the stuff that we're talking about tonight, forget it's Mrs. Mrs. Riley for a second. None of these, this conversation came up when the, the, the uh, next door neighbor, literally across the street, probably 250 feet across the street, Submitted a letter and he has to reduce the bill. We didn't get into any of this, and it was thousands. Thousands. It was thousands, and we didn't. We didn't have two meetings to decide. We didn't. We didn't do anything. We just. We granted it because we granted it because on a case by case basis, that's what we, as far as I know, as right as I can remember, we've done. So I, I don't disagree that it's good that we check it out and we see who's who and what the letter's coming from and if there's ever an issue to people. For whatever reason, the board members have the ability to abstain, vote yes, no, whatever. That's up to the board members. But I don't think there's any issues with this. It's a $479 reduction um, based upon the last four bills. Uh, right? Four bills always were like the minimum. So I don't think anyone's getting over on anybody. And uh, I would second the motion by Mr. Phillips to reduce the bill to what the homeowner's average was, which was 164.28. I agree with that. No, I, I think we should give it to Mrs. Riley. I just want to make sure that we're doing it for the right reasons and not because she's a relative of the mayor. Okay? Uh, so that's, yes, that's, that's the third so time that you've made that comment. And I want to address the public who I'm looking at. Uh, enough is enough. Um, because you say something repeatedly does not make it true. So this lady is not my relative, although I wish she was. She's a great lady. I have a motion and I have a second. May I have roll call? Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Allard? Yes. Trustee DeSalva? Yes. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Mayor D'Onofrio? Yes. I abstain. Good. Okay, next on the agenda is to approve the minutes. Uh, Make a motion. From January 3, 2022. Motion by Brian. Is there a second? Second. Second it. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. 
Next, we have to come up. We, it's time to complete the probation of a full time dispatcher, Edmund Rivera, effective immediately. You have that memo from uh, officer in charge. Make a motion we approve that. Completed his max, max probation, uh, Jim, and is recommended that he be removed from his probationary stat, status. Is there a second? Second. Roll call. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Allard? Yes. Trustee DeSalvo? Yes. Trustee Phillips? Yes. Mayor DeMarfrio? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you so much. Next, we have the resignation of a part time dispatcher, Gina Bora, effective immediately. You have that before you. She actually I mean, didn't work that much. Yeah. Uh, with regret, this is yeah. the second time we're accepting uh, yeah. Ms. Moore. Yes. <laughs> resignation. Um, wish her well down at the State Park Police. Having done that job, I know what she's doing. Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. I'm sorry? Brian is a second? Yes, I'm sorry. All in favor? Yes. 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 Opposed? Motion can. Next we have... Uh, a letter from uh, Barbara Mellon with a need to refocus my priorities. The time has come for me to fully retire from the, from the work world. As such, I am resigning my position as account clerk with the Village Island Falls effective Thursday, January 20th, 2022. My last day of work will be tomorrow, Wednesday, January 19th, 2022. I very much appreciate the opportunity you have given me to serve the village residents and homeowners for the last few years. Um, so, of course, we'll accept it because she's asking with regret, but uh, as uh, I told her, uh, being here almost all day, every day, I hear the, the way she uh, uh, speaks to the resident, the customer that comes in looking to pay, maybe pay a bill, looking to maybe object to paying a bill. Uh, all kinds of things come in here every day, all day long. And she always uh, is, she's very professional and she, like the rest of the girl, ladies downstairs, uh, goes over, over and above trying to solve the issue that the person has. So um, is there a motion to accept? I'll, I'll make the motion with regret, but I want to add that I think maybe 20 or so years from now, I'm going to start my letter with, with that opening line. I like that. With a need to refocus my priorities. Yeah. I like that. Okay. So with regret. Okay. We have a motion. Do we have a second? Second. Second by uh, with uh, regret. With regret, always. Uh, second with regret. With um. I think Barbara will be. With regret. Second by uh, Trustee Phillips. All in favor? Yes. yes. Opposed? Motion carried. Next, we have uh, our annual PESH training, P E S H, Public Employee Safety and Health training or seminars for the calendar year twenty. 22, uh, request uh, the approval for any village employee to attend public employee safety and health training or seminars this year, 2022. Motion. Second. Brian and Jim, all in favor? Yes. Opposed? Yes. Motion carried. Next, we have... Request for the Town of Highlands Chamber of Commerce to use the Senior Citizen Center to hold a Senior Sweetheart Dance on Sunday, February 13th from 1 to 4 for grandparents and their little ones. You have the paperwork in front of you um, that has all that. It has the date, the time, uh, with no insurance. Are they going to get insurance? Well, uh, we, the only way we could approve this would be approval upon the receipt of insurance coverage. Uh, so I would like to comment. Uh, this is a senior uh, activity, which is why uh, we should allow use of the senior center. And that in the past, um, we have allowed activities by the Highlanders, the senior group, uh, to have activities there without uh, carrying insurance. Um, so I would like to give uh, the chamber, Charlene and the Chamber of Commerce, you know, the, uh, a waiver uh, for them not to have to carry insurance. Uh, I did call our insurance company, the village uh, insurance company, 
And uh, she is also looking at, uh, is it Ward and Garvey, the insurer here in town, for uh, coverage. But it's, it's quite a bit. It's over $200 for a, a two to three hour event. And they're charging $10 a head. So it's actually going to be a negative, um, um, negative money maker. I think it is a good, uh, it's a good thing. It's a good thing to have. It brings the community together, brings the senior citizens together and grandchildren. It's a good use of the senior center. The senior center costs us $15,000 a year and it sits empty for the most part. Uh, so when people and groups like this have good ideas, uh, we should try to encourage it by uh, helping them out. We encourage, encourage all groups, all groups, and there's so many from church groups to civic groups to all kinds of groups, we encourage them to uh, all the time to uh, put on events, whether they're on village property or not. Most times, I guess they are, um, but we need insurance coverage we, uh, uh, from them or anyone else that wants to use uh, the Senior Citizen Center, which we hope more people will start to use. Um, you know, I'm just surprised because, a little surprised, I don't know if surprise is the right word, but I, have, I see insurance coverage by the chamber here for the art walk electric vehicle car show, eighth grade celebration, St. Patrick's Day parade. And I'm glad that they were able to get coverage because they needed it, they knew it, they went and found someone that would sponsor the event for them. So we, uh, uh, and it might be time that we talk to the Highlanders uh, about insurance. Um, the Highlanders is not a village Spot, uh, is not a village um, entity um, organization. It, they're on their own, like the Garden Club, the Fourth of July, uh, the Art Walk, all of that. So, um, by this happening, it might spark a conversation uh, which I'll have with the Highlanders. But as far as insurance, uh, I would recommend to the board that. We need insurance because we just need insurance. I mean, that's the way that's the way it is everywhere. So, well, Mr. Mayor, um, uh -huh. I mean, I agree with Trustee Brown that you know it's nice uh -huh. that they use it, but oh, gotcha. But but we, I mean, I've only been here since April, but I know we requested uh, insurance for the pavilion. We requested insurance for softball teams. We requested insurance for different things. O'Neill oh, High School. Yes, O'Neill oh, High School when they had their uh, their. Party out there at Rowe Park. Well, baseball. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. So, All that. Yeah. I mean, I, I just know. think that I just think that um, without insurance, uh, we're just going to be opening up a can of worms. I, that's my opinion. I, you know, I don't have anything against any particular club, not whatsoever. Oh no. But even the fire department. All the years I was a firefighter, you need insurance there. Yeah. So I mean, somebody used it. So I just uh, uh, that, that's my opinion. I just think I, I'd be glad to say yes as long as they have insurance. So I need a motion if you care if anyone cares up here to make it that the chamber hold this uh, uh, I think it's cute I think it's good a dance on Friday on uh, excuse me on Sunday February 13th from 1 to 4 uh, pending insurance the other thing that I want to just not warn but we got to keep COVID in mind too because you're talking senior citizens now and you're putting them in a building in a room and I just you know, I, I, the chamber I know will pay attention to what's where we are in a month from now. Um, so, it's right. you know that's that. There's a motion. Is there a second? Yes. Well, I'll, who's the motion? I'll, I'll make the motion, and I just you know I'm, I want I don't want I'm, I want to make the motion, but I want to say this first. Mm -hmm. The board supports. The new admin. Uh, let me rephrase that. I support. I'm glad that there's a new administration at the chamber. Um, I'm glad that some people are no longer there. I'm glad that there are some people that are on the board of directors that are now gone. And I wish them uh, because the focus needs to be on the businesses on Main Street. Yeah. And I applaud uh, Michelle and I wish her 
all the luck in the world and anything that we can do for that organization, as long as its focus is on Main Street businesses, we should do. Um, so I support it, and I will work on, if the cost is $200 or two whatever, I'll work on getting a donation uh, from the savings alone because we're going to be new members very soon. That's great. Uh, that just literally happened in the last five minutes. So, uh, you know, we're going to be new members uh, starting up again. So I'll, I'll great. contact her. Great. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Do I have a second? Second. All in favor? Yes. Yes. Opposed? Okay. Yeah, I said yes. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you so much. Um, there's two letters here that just came in. Uh, one is uh, one would be signed by Jack Sibley, our water superintendent, and one would be signed by John Jones, our wastewater superintendent. And they both have to do, they're identical, they both have to do with 479 Main Street, the Thera Flats Hotel. Um, Approving the uh, water service connection. What? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I'm not you no, no. Go ahead. What, I, why are we doing? I don't know why. Why are we doing this now? Like, what, what, is this just to say that we they can hook up when they need to hook up? I I believe this is needed for the book for the uh, for the uh, uh, documents for the planning board. It, it, talking to Todd, it's something that needed have, to be done. Have the escrows been replenished? Uh, yes, but they're being used up quite quickly. But they replenished them? Yeah. And, and, are, and are we, how about any uh, agreements that we've sent them to sign for parking and stuff like that? Any of those been well, I'm going to get into that, but since you asked now, the developer's agreement that we gave him a long time ago has never been signed. Now there's been a change, which he has the change and not signed, and he has not ever re, uh, um, signed the parking agreement. I mean, if, if, if he needs these for some purpose other than if it's just a, to move him to the next step, I'm okay with it. I mean, I'll, I'll, I just, I don't know why he would need it now. I mean, why would he need it to know that, I guess, is it to know that he could hook up? Uh, I thought that this had something to do with him wanting a demolition permit, right? But this is to provide potable water service. I, know. Right? So I don't understand. I don't, I don't get it. All right, I'm going to table this. Is it okay? Does he need? Is there a time sensitive? Well, he it's, apparently not. Todd. I'm going to table this and have Todd write us an email on exactly what this is about and who it's for and what purpose does it serve. Yeah, I mean, if he's not in a building now, what? Yeah, and I'll do it at the next meeting. Sorry. No, it's okay. No, that's okay, because I don't think we understand it. Okay. I agree. You okay with that, Gina? Thank you. All right, we have bills and claims for 2021 and 2022 of $140,915.83. I make the motion to pay the bills and claims. I would do it. Second. Roll call. Trustee Guerrero? Yes. Trustee Alward? Yes. Trustee Vasallo? Yes. Trustee Gillis? Yes. Mayor D'Onofrio? Yes. Thank you so much. Motion carries. Thank you. Okay. Uh, for those watching at home, um, you might have seen this on the news today. Uh, if you can write it down, you can get four COVID tests, four boxes, and there's two tests in each box sent to you within seven, the government says within seven to 12 days. If you go online, COVID test, T-E-S-T-S, -S, test has an S on it, covidtest.gov. Register, you'll have four tests sent to you. Um, you think you'll get them faster than the tax return checks? <laughs> uh, I want to, uh, I normally do cupcakes and stuff like that, oh. but, uh, um, I don't have that tonight. I'll make it up. But uh, happy birthday this month. When's your birthday? January 4th. January 4th. Happy and birthday, Brian. Happy birthday this month. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, but I, I have a question for the board. Uh,
two birthdays this month, Mr. Allworth and Mr. DeSalvo. How in God's name is Mr. Allworth look much better than Mr. DeSalvo? Well, I, Jim, I, uh, Gary, I, I, I don't know. Maybe because I'm new on the board, I don't understand it. Melanie, can you help me? You're new on the board, too. I don't know. He's a doctor. That's not right, Jim. I That's right. And Melanie, you're a doctor. Can you give us a professional opinion <laughs> why Brian looks better than Jimmy? It must be good. His wife. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah, Martha. Okay. All right. Sorry. I'll go through this list as quick as I can. Uh, uh, yesterday... Uh, was the 27th anniversary of the local Martin Luther King March. I kind of remember like it was yesterday when Mrs. Claiborne and Pastor Claiborne came to see me one morning, one day, asking if they could do this. Um, seems like about a year ago, actually it seems like a month ago, and it was 27 years. Yesterday was the first time it had to be canceled due to weather, um, but it was the right choice to make, and there'll be a follow-up to the from the committee on the Martin Luther King Day yesterday. Uh, it's time, as, and I do this often, but um, it's time to say thank you to the uh, Highland Falls Fire Department, the Fort Montgomery Fire Department, uh, and the West Point Fire Department um, um, for their 24-7 um, care for the residents in these three communities. Um, my thoughts are, I raise this only because of the recent fire we had off of Mountain Avenue on Jevons Road, um, where uh, the Fort Montgomery Fire Chief was uh, on the scene quite quick, and uh, because of his training, uh, because of his dedication, uh, because he's a brave guy, uh, went into the burning fire and searched and searched and did find a woman and got her out. Not sure what would have happened if Chief Falk wasn't on the scene as quick as he was. We want to praise, of course, the police department. Uh, they've been very uh, busy lately, and uh, I have a couple uh, uh, memos to read on a couple incidences out of many, uh, but they're always there uh, for us. And you can't praise the fire and the police without praising the ambulance corps. Because where there's fire, in mo and in most times, a lot of times, police action, you will always see the ambulance corps. So we thank all three of those organizations. Um, Thayer Flax, what we just spoke about uh, with tabling the one issue. Um, I received this from the uh, uh, planning board chairman. Uh, I had asked the question, can you tell me about any decisions on parking for the Thayer Flats now that it might go to 100 rooms? The reply back, word for word, was, Joe, the applicant is currently before the Consolidated Planning Board for an amendment to the approved plan. The amendment increases the room count to 100 and removes the pool, but does not change the footprint. The applicant was told he needs to secure the necessary parking for the room count. As of now, no plan for such has been provided. The project is on the agenda. So I don't, he had an issue with 79 rooms and now he's going to 100, so I'm not sure what will happen there. Um, there was a meeting, uh, uh, I uh, uh, requested a meeting last week, and at the meeting, this continues with their flats, and the meeting was myself, the village clerk, the village attorney, the village engineer, the town building department, the uh, officer in charge of the Hot Falls uh, Police Department, um, um, Justin uh, Ryder from the town, the town attorney, uh, the uh, engineer from the town engineering firm that they have, and I had John Jones uh, also at the meeting. It was to talk about permits, because at this uh, meeting, which was on the 14th of January, um, uh, calendar's gone. The, uh, the uh, Friday, the 14th, um, we had had a memo from uh, the owner of the property that he was going to demolish the uh, Penfed building in the Christiana, in that, that whole area there that he owns. Um, but in, there was no building demolition permit. Um, there was not the appropriate uh, paperwork on asbestos. We had never talked about street closings. The, 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 uh, the uh, entities I just named 
fire, police, and ambulance. And uh, I, had, I didn't think of, but I added it, with school buses. That all has to be worked out before uh, the demolition starts. Um, so um, he wasn't ready anyway, even though he sent out an email that he was looking to demolish. Yes. Can you? Uh, I remember Trustee Ramos always bringing up that, that also the uh, demolition route, like when they take the yes. stuff out, like we're not going to go down we, the village, we're Main Street, we're going down uh, Westmore Highway. We we bought that up, and um, um, he has been told, and he, he'll be he'll, this will all be gone over again. He's going to pull in to Perry Avenue, go up Perry a little bit, make a left onto the property, load up. An exit on the main street between Penfed and Christiana, and then he will be directed at the next meeting to go across the street to West Point Highway and leave town and come back with empty dump trucks that way, right. not down Main Street and not up Mountain Avenue. Right. We just yeah, and he was told that the other the other day. Um, but we talked about all of that, uh, and now, uh, so, so that I can move on to other business, we talked about um, um, telephone pole removals. So he has gotten permission from, I don't know about permission, he's willing to pay Orange and Rockland to remove several poles in the front, on Perry, and on Drew. That's fine. He pays that. We don't pay anything. Um, but my concern is, and some of you that have been on the board will understand this, is when will the old pole that they'll dislodge all the wires off of to put on the new pole, when will the old pole be taken down? We have in this community right now five or six double poles, two poles next to each other, a new pole and an old pole. They've been there years. Trying to get them to remove the old pole, I don't want to say it's impossible, because it's not impossible, but it, it, takes, it, it takes a lot of time and aggravation. So I'm just looking for a plan, when will the old poles be removed? I don't want anything more than that. Is this going to require a new hookup for some of the residents? I, I think so. Well, then that should be paid for by... Oh, it, yeah, they don't, they're not going to pay that. If that happens, you're right. Okay. No, you're right. Okay, so that's the, the double poles. Uh, again, there's no developer's agreement signed. There's no parking agreement signed. Uh, that's that. That's their flats. All of this is their flats. Okay, what is this? Oh, just a question on that. So the agreements are between him and us, mm -hmm. the village? Mm -hmm. I see. And uh, we approve it once he has a plan of how the demolition is to go. Well, he has to provide. Like he has to provide um, a lot of information that the building department wants. The building department. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But we all agree that this is progress for Main Street if it were to happen, right? Yeah. We'll see. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, the backhoe is down, uh, meaning it's not working. Um, right now we have a rental uh, for a month. So we have the choices are to fix. Uh, the fix is, um, and, and to have it put on a flatbed to bring over the mountain to the guy who fixes it and then bought back that way around, around 13,000. We can lease uh, a new vehicle and then buy it for a dollar after the lease is over with. Um, that's something the town does. I don't know about the which vehicles they do that with, if it's all of them or some of them. Um, or we buy one which is 116. Okay. So. Um, a little bit of a guess, I'm gonna, and I'll verify tomorrow. Fifteen. I thought something was up there. So the life inspection is definitely over on that. I mean, because we do use it quite a bit. 
I mean, it's not like it just sits there. Unit ten, they call it Unit 10. And we, you know, you're right there. We use it a lot. Yeah, it doesn't like uh, We use there. it for water leaks. We use it to, to go up to the town the and rise for the salt. Yeah. It probably, usually they rate those piece of equipment by hours. It probably doesn't have a lot of hours, per se, on it. The problem is, is it takes literally a beating. Because oh, yeah. we, we have we one it. and we use it for just everything. We have one and we use it for everything. Yes. So that, yes. that, 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 that's the, I mean, it, it has so many purposes the, that the, we use it for. The salt has taken a toll on it, the rust yeah. and the rot. Um, now, the town has two, as I understand it. I can be corrected tomorrow morning or tonight. Uh, but I think they, the one they use for, they have one up there that's just you basically use for loading salt. Now, I don't know. I think that's correct. So it's in better shape than ours because they just have one for salt and then they have one that does other work. Anyway, we have to make a decision on this. And it's going to cost what to fix it? Uh, Roughly 13. 13 grand. So if we do not decide not to fix it, can we sell it and get some money? Yes. We, do, we seem to do very well on the auction block. Yeah, some will. Some will. Someone will put the money in to fix it because it might, you know, they might just need it for one thing. You know, they're not going to use it for quite a bit. It might, yeah, might, might, use might it be, move a rock or they might also, take right? it for personal use. Like yeah. you might not be able to have it on a job. I, you know, I don't know, but um, it's, it breaks down quite a bit. Tim Green's. I think we'll have the, you know, budgetary wise, we had the money mm -hmm. in the budget to purchase the new truck that we got. Mm -hmm. So I think the money will be there. Like there's no. You know, to make the purchase. So, I, I mean, I, unless we can get somebody else to give us another opinion, I trust Tim's and John's opinion about the piece of equipment. Now. Well, it's also I a would, mechanic from ha uh, Hoffman's, which is up in Marlboro, yeah, where it would go to be. I, I don't know that I would sink $13,000 into it, mm -hmm. roughly. I mean, that's, I'm one that's vote. That's an estimate. Yeah, you know, I'm one vote. Yeah, because you could find something else wrong with it, correct? Yeah. yeah. So it could cost us more. Yeah. I, I mean, I would rent, I mean, we have it rented right now for. Whatever it is. Um, I can bring it up at the next meeting. But I even just, if we order, even if we say we're going to get it, you're not going to get it for a couple of months. Yes, six, right. maybe six months. But the sooner we do, the less we have to pay in rental. So that's where I'm at. And again, it would be nice if someone could approach the town. That's up to someone, on, anyone on the board. That would help us greatly, actually. Approach the town about just borrowing theirs. Well, if, of if, we borrowing it. Ours? if we needed, no, no, if we needed it, I, I think we, we've had this discussion too about sharing one. And you know, and listen, in a perfect world, I'd love to just share every piece of equipment, but it's just sometimes it just doesn't work out that way. But I think that if we needed it, I think is, yeah. is the question is they would, you yeah. know, and, and and the reason it wouldn't work out a lot of times, they would need it probably the same time we need it, so you know. Well, I could try. We could try to see if we can, uh, you know, make an agreement on. Well, uh, there is. I mean, we every municipality has like an intermissible agreement that you have in an emergency. Yeah. But it wouldn't be necessarily an emergency. It'd be just like for the next couple of months, while we're in the process of doing budget and approving it, if we have one for a month, or if we have to do another month to rent it, but we'd like to not have to do that expense. And, yeah. 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 Uh, um. I'll approach the town and see if we can come up with an agreement. Great. You know. Great. All right. Sooner the better, and then we can make a decision. All right. Uh, I want to read uh, uh, two press releases uh, from the Hall Falls. Okay. Oh, no. Police Department. On January fourth, twenty twenty-two, like last week, at least, the Hall Falls Police Department recovered a non-serialized. AR-15, also known as a ghost gun. A ghost gun is something, a gun that doesn't have a serial number on it. It's not that it was scratched off. It never had a serial number. That was dis discharged in an apartment here in Holland Falls. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to mention the guy's name. Holland Falls, he was arrested and charged with criminal possession of an assault weapon, third. Felony and reckless endangerment, second. Misdemeanor. Here's, here's the kicker. And I've done this before up here. He was released on an appearance ticket. He shot an AR-15 three or four times in his apartment. Released on an appearance ticket due to the bail reform charges, changes that were implemented by the state. 
Second incident, on January 12, 2022, in continuance with our narcotics investigation, a person, young, in her 30s, from Hong Falls, was arrested and charged with criminal, criminal sale of a controlled substance, third, and possession of a controlled substance, third, with the intent to sell both felonies. She was released on an appearance ticket due to bail reform changes implemented by the state. Thank you so much. Um, we will have before us soon, I don't have the date exactly, but soon, um, the draft of the uh, comprehensive plan. Meeting the other day, Gina was there, Todd was there, speaking to the LA group who's doing the plan. I wanted to make sure that the water plant um, projects that we have slated and some in the future are in the plan. Bog Metal was in the plan, the, the, uh, what we're going to do up there. That trails uh, be put in, the trails would be on the scenic cuts and property behind the old Grand Union and the five acres of land behind Little League. Uh, we talked about uh, in there there'll be some uh, PUDs, PUDs. PUD, PUD is a, uh, uh, a zoning that will allow something that the community would like. Um, we put in there the hotels, two of them, sidewalks to O'Neill, bike and running paths, climate smart community endeavors, um, the wastewater treatment plant, um, uh, rehabilitation that we're doing down there and anything that uh, very large projects in the DPW and again of course our zoning map. Tomorrow Verizon will be here uh, to as we continue this uh, antenna uh, cell antennas for this building and the Senior Citizen Center and um, they'll be here tomorrow with a couple of engineers to look at our roof uh, the structure uh, of our roof for equipment that they're going to need to put upstairs for the antenna to work. So that that is moving. Um, received a, an email today from the village attorney that uh, the, a county judge, Judge on Onofri, a decision in the Copal versus the village of Holland Falls Verizon case, he dismissed her petitions in its entirety. I am a bit surprised because I and Verizon attorneys were responding uh, for, in, for the motion with an injunction. We had not filed a motion to dismiss. However, I did press the standing argument and the court agreed with me. So that is good for us. So, um, of course, uh, she can appeal. And she likes that may happen. But so far, so good. Okay, we did this. Coffee with a cop. We had our first uh, once a month coffee with a cop at the park restaurant on a Saturday morning. It went over very, very well. I will report on the next one for February. Um, I want to thank uh, Senator Scoofus uh, for thinking of us with his test kits. Um, I think there were hundreds of people. I hear they were lined up 9W past Dunkin' Donuts to go down to the Brooks's. Um, People want the test kits. Comp plan I did. I would like all of you to look at the wall so I can so we can see what you want to do at the next meeting. The wall on South Street. If you go up Cousins Avenue and you make a right onto South Street, right away on the left is a wall, a stone wall. It's, it goes up like this. And you'll see a very large bow. Very large. Uh, it needs to be fixed. But I want you to see it, and then we'll then we'll do it, Mr. Mayor. I, yeah. I, I saw that, uh, mm -hmm. and that thing is uh, it's it's going to be horrendous if it comes down. Yeah, yeah. Because it's, it's going to go that those rocks are going to roll right into people's cars, into their houses across yes. the street. I totally and agree. It's very, very dangerous. Totally agree. Because of the pitch of it, we have yeah. an uh, we have a an estimate of sixty three thousand. It's quite a job. It just so happens that these walls that were built 50, and that's the youngest one, 80, 90, 100 years ago, are saying, hey, I wanna, I'm old now, I want to be fixed. <laughs> that's, what, that's what we're doing. Okay, um, 
I'll have a proposal uh, at the next meeting to replace the three filters at the water plant, which date back to 1954. I will have an estimate um, dredging 9W reservoir. Last time it was done is in the 60s. I don't have the exact year. Um, Schumacher is, is going to give us a proposal on raising the dam to capture millions of gallons of more water. And uh, there's some brush and trees up at upper bog, bog and lower bog that have to be taken out. Um, we'll, have to, we'll also have to um, address that. Um, the last thing I think I have is... Schumacher's still looking at abandoning lower bog, right? Yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Um, we had a meeting uh, here, right around the corner there, uh, last uh, Friday. Um, I'm going to let Brian report on it. Uh, it was a meeting that I had asked for, where uh, I was there, the deputy mayor was there, supervisor, deputy supervisor, uh, Todd, our engineer, the town engineer, uh, to discuss a host of items that I want to talk about and then anything else they want to talk about. Um, but I'm going to let, uh, I'll let Brian do that. Okay, anything? anything? Uh, yes, yes, just a couple of things for me. Okay. I know that everybody's exhausted hearing about uh, COVID and that uh, we all wish to be back to our normal lives from a couple of years ago. But I do want to report that all the hospitals here in upstate New York, downtown, were all at capacity. The ICUs are full uh, with COVID patients. Uh, we, doctors, you know, nurses, all the healthcare employees at uh, the hospitals, we've been working double shifts this past six weeks uh, just to accommodate the surge. Uh, so it's real and uh, there is a surge. And most of the patients, I'd like to report to you, are mostly unvaccinated, or those who did not get their boosters in time, or those who are vaccinated, but severely immunocompromised. I think the take home point on that is that the vaccines do work. So if you don't have a contraindication for getting the vaccine, please get it. And uh, if it's been five months, since you got uh, your series, you should really get the booster. Um, even if you get COVID, if you're vaccinated, your chances of not having to be hospitalized are much better than if you were unvaccinated. And your chances of survival is also much better. Um, so get it, it does work. And along the same lines, I really do want to thank Aaron Falk. Uh, he's the uh, town recreation director and Lori Pautel, uh, she's the, our Orange County legislator, everybody knows that, uh, for working with Senator Scoofus and getting 700 COVID uh, test kits. I know that that's a very scarce, uh, a, a very, it's a commodity that's really scarce. And it was hard for them to get that for the citizens of uh, Highland Falls and Fort Montgomery. Um, Aaron distributed these kits on Friday, uh, but he made sure that he offered them first to those who needed them most, and that's the senior citizens. And I do commend people like him, uh, people like Aaron, because uh, for his public service. This is not in his job description, but he did it. Uh, I know it's hard to acquire, it's hard to work for. I mean, even I, you know, as a doctor, I have a very no authority on getting this uh, COVID tests, uh, testing kits. Um, Aaron does it, not because he wants to be popular, he doesn't want to run for public office, he's not doing it to buy influence from others. Uh, I really just believe him to be a, a genuinely uh, caring person. So thank you again to Aaron and to Lori Totel for putting the citizens of Highland Falls and Fort Montgomery uh, first. You got us some testing materials too, right? Oh yeah. Who do you hand them out to? Somebody asked me, I can't remember. DPD. 
I had, uh, I gave them to uh, the uh, Hanfels Fire Department. Okay. And to seniors who have been calling me. Okay. Yeah. I, I forgot. I no, I appreciate answer it. Answer the questions. Yeah. Um, if anyone asks me and I have them, which I do, I give them. Okay. And I'm working with uh, Senator Stolfus and Colin Schmidt to have a um, distribution here. Okay. I'm uh, going to take up a little time, which I normally don't, but this time I'm going to. At the meeting, I heard that. At the meeting, <laughs> re regarding uh, the bills being paid, I went in in the morning and I reviewed them. And Jim and Gary said they didn't know if they could get off work to come in and do that. They did. I should have left at that time because I knew what the meetings, uh, what the bills were, but I didn't. So I'll take responsibility for that. Um, the only mistake I made is when I went back, I didn't ask, is this meeting over? And I started talking again about future projects. That's all that was discussed at that meeting. And what I'm going to get into next is when we met with the town, they had some of the same concerns we did about future projects. The vote was given. It's time to drop those issues and start looking at our priorities both in the town and in the village. Dr. Patel asked a question about consolidation. So on Friday we met with the gentleman that Joe mentioned, and we talked about several things. We talked about the water projects, both in the town and the village. We talked about a water tank being built in the town. We talked about our replacing filters, our dam work that we need to do. Um, we started to say, Inflation is hitting everyone. We need to work together economically and to work together. And a perfect example of that is the Hilton will now be adding on an addition. Dunkin' Donuts has a lot next to it. That's going to be developed. Condos are going to be developed. We talk about our sewer plant as having space in it more than the town has it. Their space. Uh, the town can be building condos and new houses. They have the land, we don't. It was a good meeting, it was a lot of interaction between everyone there. We have decided that every two months we're going to meet with the town and go over the issues. Yes, the public will know about the issues that we discussed, just as we're doing tonight. The, um, some of my end of some of the comments at the end is congratulations to Ray Devereaux. He retired after 20 plus years on the zoning board. Um, thanks to all those who plowed the roads and prepared the roads early in the morning. It was cold. Thank you for your hard work. Uh, Jim Modlin, uh, we talked about the Chamber of Commerce. My belief is he was pro business. And I'm urging everybody if you need to get tested, please get tested. Thank you. Just to, thank you, Brian, just to follow up uh, on the meeting uh, that I spoke about and Brian spoke about. We did talk about, um, it's important that uh, the town build this water tank. Uh, it's important for them and it's important for us. So they, they thought it would be built this year, 2022. Um, a couple proposals uh, that we're going to work on and give to them, they said they would be interested in proposals on some of these items I brought up. Um, they want to uh, put a water line and a sewer line somewhere near the dead end of Mearns Avenue to hook up to the town highway garage. We told them we have that's fine. You know they would have to pay for that, but that it needed to be done before we are ready to pave Mearns Avenue. So uh, that's um, we got to keep our we got to keep our calendar on that one. Um, we did bring up a couple of other things that I'll bring up at another meeting. Uh, um, we talked about the, both police departments, we talked about land return, and um, there's information that has to be given to them, which I will do, and we'll bring it back to the community, um, how we all see things on those issues. Aaron? Uh, yes, just, just a quick couple things. Um, no, no water report. Uh, 
Jack and uh, Pablo are doing a fantastic job up there. But uh, our guys did a really good job of, of plowing the roads mm -hmm. and everything. Um, but we can help our guys out. Uh, you know, when when you're shoveling the sidewalk, don't don't throw a bat into the street. I mean, that's just that makes it harder. It's, it's bad enough that cars are parked there when they're not supposed to be parked there. They're going around cars. Um, you know, they get as close as they can to a curb. Uh, cars on you know the streets are, are are literally another two to three feet from the curb, so it's hard for people to back out of their driveways. Uh, just just help out. Uh, just clean up in front of your area, especially for uh, uh, the town when they're picking up your recyclables and your garbage cans. I mean, I seen years ago they used to get out and empty out the garbage can. I understand that now they have claws, but they still get out and do it. But it's not their job to pull the garbage can from your property up to the curb and do it. If you don't have it set out there and, you have it, and it's all snowbound and they don't pick it up, which they do, but if they don't pick it up, it's nobody's fault but your own. You gotta help our people out, you know, in the town and the village. I mean, you're paying taxes and, and yes, it is a service, but uh, you know, it, it's like anything else. You, you have to like love thy neighbor. You have to take care of somebody, you know, and, and that's the way I feel about it. You need somebody to need help shoveling, Help them out, but don't don't throw it back on the street. And you know, like I said, just do the right thing. I, I mean, that's all. I'm not standing on a soapbox or anything, but it's just it's not it's not fair to our people, and it's not fair to your next door neighbor when you're throwing you know uh, snow into their property or into the front of their driveway. You know, it's it's not fair. Just do the right thing, everybody, please. That's all. Thank you, Jim. Yeah, real quick, uh, just a quick echo over the board. Uh, DPW did a good job. It's, um, it's the first real snowstorm. Um, and just keep the residents keep in mind, a lot of the DPW crew is new. I mean, it's they don't have um, the same uh, talent, I guess, that they used to have. It's years of experience, so um, you know, there's a little learning curve there. And I'll take you know ten little storms instead of one big storm because it's just a big storm you know there's nowhere to put it and things get tighter and cars are here and there so I commend them and keep at it and um, it's good training with the little storms it makes you able to handle the big storms a uh, shout out to Mr. Hannibal in the building department uh, I happened to pop in with him I think it was uh, the end of last week and uh, he's got stuff all over and he's working on a lot of stuff and uh, and that was good. We talked about a lot of things the mayor brought up regarding uh, uh, different properties on Main Street. Uh, and he's working diligently on that area. Um, it, it's tough. It, it's tough for basically a one-man show. And he's got a, a, a nice new assistant down there uh, who's working out pretty well, uh, very responsive. Um, so I wish them well and I stay in touch with them. Thank you. I would like to entertain a motion to adjourn. I would like to make the motion. Like to entertain it secondly? Second. All in favor? Yes. That's two yeses. I'll make it a fourth yes. yes. Motion adjourned. Thank you so much.